Hi, I'm Matt with Meat Church. Let's make pork ribs with Korean barbecue sauce. My influence for this comes from my buddy Billy Durney, Hometown Barbecue in Brooklyn, New York. He sells Korean sticky ribs. Uh, when I had them at his barbecue joints, first time I'd ever had it, and they were absolutely delicious. People ask me all the time, what's your favorite type of food? You know, when you're not eating barbecue and uh, it's Asian food. And so anytime I can marry barbecue and Asian flavors together, I think it's a win. Full disclosure, I don't know how Billy makes his uh, Korean sauce. We have a Korean barbecue sauce. Uh, if you remember back when we did Korean fried chicken wings, huge hit, tasty as heck. Uh, we made a Korean barbecue sauce for that. So we're gonna make another one here for these ribs. But the ribs gonna be a pretty standard cook. 250, cook them for a couple hours, uh, wrap them when they look really pretty, put a little bit of stuff in the wrap, open them up to finish with this sauce. And we'll make the sauce together here in just a little bit. But fairly straightforward, so we're gonna jump right in rack of Prairie Fresh St. Louis cut spare ribs that I picked up at my local grocery store. The only thing I've done to these is I have peeled the membrane off the back because I don't need to waste your time seeing how to do that. Um, but all I'm gonna do is trim them up. So I like to lay them out and you don't have to trim if you don't want, you paid good money for this, um, but I like to trim them so they cook nice and even. And down here on the end, it gets really thin. Uh, so I'm gonna flip this over to kind of see the bones, press it down to fill it. And I'm just gonna square these up, basically uh, using my Montana knife, fillet knife. Same thing on the other end. Oh, the other end's right on the bone. I feel good about that. Always like to round up the edges. Otherwise, they're just gonna kind of burn up. We're gonna jump right into seasoning. Not a whole lot that we need to do to these. Often you see me put a binder on ribs certainly can put yellow mustard on these. I actually just don't have any here at the shop today. So bind them if you want. Um, I'm going to use our all-purpose, the gospel. This is a Southwestern all-purpose rub. It's amazing on poultry. Um, we say it has the best color in barbecue. That's because after the seasoning adheres, it's basically going to be super bright red. And if you followed us for a while, you know the history. I took my buddy Travis Clark's barbecue school years ago and he made a comment, actually I was in there with uh, my buddy Malcolm Reed, and he made a comment that he keeps a red rub in his arsenal uh, to kind of repair things in competition and, and things like that. And so that's kind of what made me want to go out and make something really bright red. But love this rub. I don't talk enough about it. And honestly, it's just a great rib flavor. You can get uh, our seasonings at meatchurch.com along with our swag like you see me wearing today. Uh, we're here in our barbecue supply shop in Waxhachie, so you can come here and get it as well. And I gotta throw a little nod to some friends. A shirt I'm wearing, uh, friends of ours, Thomas Rhett and Wade Bowen recently uh, wore this exact shirt on stage for their concerts, which was pretty dang awesome of them to do that. Little known fact about myself and Thomas Rhett, uh, combined we have 20 number one hits. I don't know if you guys knew that or not, but um, not a lot of people can say that. So. Anyway, I'm gonna pat this in. I'm gonna let it adhere. Um, I think y'all should let this adhere for an hour. Give it at least 15 minutes. But I'm feeding my whole crew today, so I'm gonna go grab another rack to prep, and then I'll see y'all out at the grill. Pretty standard cook today. We're rocking a Traeger Timberline 850 with hickory pellets. I always say hickory is like my number one all purpose. 250 degrees, kind of universal smoking temperature. If you want to go lower, a little hotter, no problem. All we're going to do is we're going to cook these ribs until they're beautiful mahogany. Then we're going to wrap them. Between now and then, if you want a spritz, cider vinegar, water, or if you even want to use an Asian flavor like a soy sauce, that's fine too, only if they're looking dry. It's been exactly two hours and 30 minutes. The ribs honestly look gorgeous. I told you the gospel is the best color in barbecue. All we've done is we spritzed these one time during the cook when they were looking a little bit dry. And I gotta say, I love cooking on a Traeger. We're here at the shop. 
I haven't done a thing except work and hang out and talk to customers while this did its thing. So now we're gonna wrap them. I'm going with a very straightforward, easy, old school wrap. A little bit of butter, of course, we're using parquet because that's thing in barbecue. Just a touch of brown sugar and a little agave. I prefer that over honey. We're gonna wrap them up in two pieces of foil. Little tip, there's this old myth that shiny side out on foil is the wrong way. It makes no difference. Don't listen to inexperienced people. Doesn't make any freaking difference. It's been proven. So let's wrap them up, put them back in, and we're gonna cook them until they're probe tender, which is gonna be probably 2-0 something, but we'll check back then. Babies wrapped up, like I said, back in the Traeger, same temperature, meat side down. So the ribs are almost done cooking. I like to put my sauces together near the end of the cook because I wanna put them on hot. Uh, this sauce is, like I said earlier, very similar to our Korean fried chicken wing sauce. We made a couple of changes, but by and large, it's actually really similar. So we're starting out with half a cup of gochujang, We've got four tablespoons um, of soy sauce, four tablespoons of agave, two tablespoons of hoisin sauce, two tablespoons of sesame seed oil, two tablespoons of rice wine vinegar, two tablespoons of freshly grated garlic, and then two tablespoons of freshly grated ginger, one tablespoon of dried Thai chilies, just chopped up really finely. We're gonna take all these ingredients, we're gonna put them in a pot, we're just gonna warm them up so they meld together. We don't need to bring them to a simmer or reduce them or anything like that. I just want a warm sauce to go on my ribs. So let's put them in. All right, these ribs are done. Let's sauce them. Hold on a minute, let me get his ass back to work. All right, now let's really sauce these ribs. How do I know they're done? They're probing 207 in between the bones right in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open these up, I'm gonna flip them over, make a little foil boat, I'm gonna paint that sauce on here, and I'm gonna let it tack up for about 10 minutes. These have cooled off, they look awesome, smell awesome. Um, I forgot to mention, I was about two hours in the wrap and then when we sauced, I purposely sauced really heavy, heavier than I normally do because to me, this is about the sauce. So we let them, we ended up letting them tack up for somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes. So we basically were a five hour rib all in on this. But the way Billy serves his is he garnishes with crushed cashews uh, and with green onion. And so we're gonna do that today as well. A little change of pace from, from sesame seeds. Eat with your eyes first, and these look awesome. All right, let's slice in. All right. Well, it looks awesome. I mean, super deep smoke ring. I'm excited. Here we go, let's dig in. Super saucy. Those are freaking awesome. It's nuts how good those taste. That sauce is a winner. I'm telling you, see what I did there? That's pretty funny. I love that sauce. Um, I'm gonna tell y'all now, I'd never made it on ribs prior to this video, so this was a test to see how these would be. I loved it on the Korean fried chicken wings. Totally made a couple changes. There's a little bit of heat in that too. Uh, so that's a sweet heat of a different variety. Y'all know we have lots of rib videos in this channel. If you're new here, we've got all sorts of traditional ribs and everything else. Um, I think a perfectly cooked rib, anytime you can bite the meat and pull it right off um, without, without it uh, you know falling off the bone, 
that's the right way to cook a rib, but that sauce is a winner. By the way, that sauce recipe that we put in today would probably do about four racks, so you could cut it down if you're just doing a rack or two, but I'll put the rest in my fridge and save it for next time. If you guys like what we're doing, please like uh, the video, subscribe to the channel, tell all your friends about us, and we'll see y'all next week.